Hello everyone, welcome back Behind the Eye of Odin. I'm your host, Eric. I'm going to go ahead and skip the introduction and the prologue to the Prose Edda, Tales from the Norse Mythology by Snorri Sturluson, translated by Arthur Gilchrist Broder. Um, I will be putting those up as a separate video. I'm going to put those in all at once, and it's going to be like an hour long. So if you want to watch that introduction to the book, you can feel free to do so once I get it posted. But because the editing takes so very long, because I'm trying to make it flow for you guys and, and get all of the ums and pauses and restarts out of the way, that is why that is not up first. So, that said, I'm going to go ahead and start. Here begins the beguiling of Gilfi. King Gilfi ruled the land that men now call Sweden. It is told of him that he gave to a wandering woman, in return for her merrymaking, a plow hand in his realm, as much as four oxen might turn up in a day and a night. But this woman was of the kin of the Asir. She was named Gefun. She took from the north, out of Jotunheim, four oxen, which were the sons of a certain giant and herself, and set them before the plow. And the plow cut so wide and so deep that it loosened up the land, and the oxen drew the land out into the sea, and to the westward, and stopped in a certain sound. There Gefun set the land, and gave it a name, calling it Selund. And from that time on, the spot whence the land had been torn up is water, and is now called the Loger in Sweden. And bays lie in that lake, even as the headlands in Selund. Thus says Bragi, the ancient skald. Gefun drew from Gilfi, till from the running beasts the oxen bore moreover or the field's wide booty, gladly the wave trove's freehold. Sweat reeked to Denmark's increase, eight eyes gleaming brow lights, and foreheads in their plowing. Section 2 King Gilfi was a wise man and skilled in magic. He was much troubled that the Asir were so cunning that all things went according to their will. He pondered whether this might proceed from their own nature, or whether the divine powers which they worshipped might ordain such things. He set out in his, on his way to Asgard, going secretly, and clad himself in the likeness of an old man, with which he dissembled. But the Asir were wiser in this matter, having second sight, and they saw his journey, journeying before ever he came, and prepared against him deceptions of the eye. When he came into the town, he saw there a hall so high that he could not easily make out the top of it. Its thatching was laid with golden shields after the fashion of a shingled roof. So says Throdolfer of Finn that Valhall was thatched with shields. On their backs they let beam Odin's hall shingles, sore battered with stones, the shrewd seafarers. <clears throat> In the hall doorway, Gilfi saw a man juggling with onlaces, having seven in the air at one time. This man asked of him his name. He called himself Gangleri and said he had come by the paths of the serpent, and prayed for lodging for the night, asking, Who owns the hall? The other replied that it was their king, and I will attend thee to see him. Then shalt thou thyself ask him concerning his name. And the man wheeled about before him into the hall, and he went after, and straightway the door closed itself on his heels. There he saw a great room and much people, some with games, some drinking, and some had weapons and were fighting. Then he looked about him, and thought unbelievable many things which he saw, and he said, All the gateways ere one goes out should one scan, for it is uncertain, where sit the unfriendly on the bench before thee. He saw three high seats, each above the other, and three men sat thereon, one in each. And he asked what might be the names of those lords. He who had conducted him in answered that the one who sat on the nethermost high seat was a king, and his name is Har. But in the next is named Jafanhar, and he who is uppermost is called Thridi. Then Har asked the newcomer whether his errand were more than for the meat and drink which were always at his command, as for every one there in the hall of the high one. He answered that he first desired to learn whether there were any wise man there within, and Har said that he should not escape whole from thence unless he were wiser. And stand thou forth, who spearest, who answers, he shall sit. 
we'll go ahead and end there. We'll start with section three of the Beguiling of Gilfi on the next video. Like I said, um, I will post the information from the uh, introduction and the prologue in one long video if you guys want to read that or listen to that. Uh, this is the Prose Edda, Tales from Norse Mythology by Snorri Sturluson, translated by Arthur Gilchrist Broder, published in the public domain by Dover Books, uh, available, I believe, at doverbooks.com. However, uh, thank you to Dover Books for uh, answering my questions on the public domain eminence of this book. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll join me for the next installment from Section 3 on. Uh, any questions, comments, or concerns, if I can answer those questions, I feel free to leave them in the, in the comment section below. But thanks for watching, everybody, and of course, until next time, Odin be with you.